surprised. Welcome back to my Steps to Sobriety, my show on YouTube and as a podcast with me, your host, Stefan Neff. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, press that little like button down there so that you get notified whenever we get a new guest on, which is twice a week. Guys, we are meeting fantastic people here. And today is no no exception, because I've got Yogi Aaron with me. And the name is a giveaway. We are talking about yoga. And that's why do I want to, to have this guy on my show? This guy is very uh, different than your normal yoga uh, teacher who says, oh, let's make a pretzel, put your left big toe into the right ear and then twice around your neck. And you think, what? And, uh, you know, I've been to yoga classes where um, such flexibility was was focused upon and i felt crap often enough afterwards um obviously my body in its own right maybe has got a few kinks in there where certain poses in traditional yoga certainly in flexibility in wrongly applied flexibility yoga um can actually not be so clever and yogi aaron is exactly focusing on that so uh, so aaron thank you so much for coming on to my show thank you so much for having me here i really appreciate it it's a real honor to be mm. here and Good. talk to you and your community oh thank you very much so i always thought it is it is me obviously i'm not flexible enough obviously it is a problem and in all fairness i mean there was a time when i was flexible i did lots of martial arts i could kick easily a, a can off someone's head so i was you know that kind of stretching i was close to the splits you know those kind of things they didn't really harm me, but my back and stretching, oh, different story. Um, so, but that's me. And, 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 you know, it is, it, that's probably something that everyone can relate to. You are in a completely different league, though. I mean, how <laughs> did you come to the realization that flexibility done wrong can actually be harmful? Well, I want to I want to just first comment on on sort of your own journey and that so many people that are not flexible and, you know, like the archetypical person who, you know, bends forward and can't get their hands back to their knees, past their knees. And a lot of those people are really, you know, they view yoga as like this painful practice. Mm. And um, it's it's very um I think kind of self-defeating. And so one of my objectives has always been to how do we make yoga more accessible to people? Mm -hmm. And, and that has also kind of taken me down this journey. I used to be that when I was 18, you know, that kind of person that could barely bend forward past his knees. Uh -huh. And I was, and I started to ask myself like, well, if I want to stay young, um, what do I need to do? Uh -huh. Well, stretching. I mean, if you ask most people like, mm -hmm. you know, what, why should you stretch? They're going to say, give you one of two answers. One, two, well, be more flexible, obviously, but to be more healthy or to stay young. Those are kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. that how we equate flexibility to. Mm -hmm. And I just started to hurt myself. Um, I started like, you know, lifting a box, a heavier box, and my back would go out. And mm -hmm. then a few days, a few years Later, I remember one trip, I came back home from vacation when I should have been relaxed. And I was sitting on the couch. Um, and I was talking to some family members. And then I got up from the couch. And as I stood up, my whole lower back seized up. And, you know, I never really put it together, like yoga, uh, stretching, let me clarify, like, be very clear about that yoga is great. But the stretching part is what I'm talking about. And all the mm. stretching was really kind of hurting my body. And I finally started putting some pieces together. It started around uh, 2015. And I started to realize, like, maybe stretching isn't great. And it all kind of culminated around mm. um, five years ago when I ended up in the surgeon's office. And he was telling me that I might need a spinal fusion. Mm. And then I was like... I need to make some changes in my life right now. And at that point, I not only vowed never to stretch again, but I also vowed never to teach stretching again. And one of the things that I've come to notice is that 
when I'm teaching like normal yoga, people have good benefits. I mean, of course mm-hmm. they do. But when I'm the work that I'm doing now, people in, inevitably become pain free somewhere around day six to day 10. Usually after six to 10 days of practicing like this, um, people just become pain free. And I think that's a really amazing thing. Um, and I can tell you that I've not been under the surgeon's knife. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this stuff, it, it works. Mm. And, um, and part of what I'm about is flipping the script on yoga and flexibility, because I feel like the word or the practice of flexibility and stretching have hijacked yoga. Mm. And I want us to reclaim what yoga is really about. Okay, these are very, very good points you're making. I think there, there's, there's. Let's let's be a bit more careful um, before we go. If we hone in on what uh, the work you have you have developed. Uh, we need to say that when we talk about yoga, um, it's the same as you say. Oh, I like European food. Uh, yes. Europe is huge. And even if you compare regions within Germany, there's huge differences between the food. Okay. Leave alone German food compared with Italian, Greek, Turkish food for crying out loud, you know, as worlds yeah. apart, it's the same with yoga. So there will be so many sub uh, groups of yoga practices and some of them more extreme in flexibility than others. So let's, let's not, pour the, the whole baby out with the with the bath water here that's that's, <laughs> that's let's one of take, my favorite expressions <laughs> exactly so let's be very clear about that number one so we are not we are not going against against uh yoga we are not not uh using too broad a brush there a stroke uh we want to be just sensible Second, well and what i said earlier is that i did mention earlier that Um, When I'm talking about yoga, I'm specifically talking about the quote unquote practice of stretching Mm. or to create flexibility. So Mm. like yoga, as you said, is this big school, but I'm kind of honing in on just like this idea that yoga is equated to flexibility and stretching. When you ask most people, what do you think of when you think of yoga? They think, oh, I go there to stretch, Mm. you know, I go to the gym to do weights and I go to, um, um, church to pray but i go to yoga to stretch interesting and yep. and so that's what that's all i'm honing mm. on i'm not i'm not going after or or mm. speaking ill of any kind of school of yoga um i'm just talking about how in the west especially we've hijacked this idea that yoga equals stretching and flexibility yep, absolutely <laughs> and we have to say we have to say let's let's actually talk a little bit about the, the physics and the, the biomechanics when yes. I can, mechanic, biomechanics refers to the fact how the muscles and the bones and the joints work together to allow your yes. body to do certain things now yes. there's no doubt about it uh, you, if you don't use it, you lose it. I see that again and again in older people. I'm an anesthetist. We do joint replacements, those kind of things. And there are some people they are as stiff as, and you think of a crying out loud. You could have done a little <laughs> bit more about stretching. You could have, you could have used your body. You know exactly they have not used their body, and they're literally seized up. Okay, yeah. their range, their range of motion has just. They're crippled by lack of activity, lack of using. So don't now say, oh, see, I don't need to stretch anymore. That's it. That's it. No, we say use it or lose it. So therefore, yeah. you, but use it sensibly. Don't do harm. Because if yeah. we now go to the other extreme, let me show you, let me, let me teach you a few things about your body. Um, and uh, Aaron, you, we do a tech team here because I, I, I uh, want to tell you a simple thing. Uh, and if you then just jump in, you go for it, man. Um, <laughs> for example, absolutely. No, no, that's, that's this here. I've got you as a guest, but I'm talking. That's a bit unfair. But I'm, I'm a doctor and I want to make sure that we get it right. Uh-huh. Um, there are some people out there who are naturally very, very flexible. They can yeah. stretch themselves. They bend themselves. They put their, their thumb yeah. back to, you know, they, they, they hit the, the down here. Now that's it's called hyperflexibility. So there are some people yeah. out there who are actually very lax and very relaxed, so, and actually to a harmful way. 
Um, and yeah. why and why I'm saying that is to be to go into extreme motions can stretch tissues, especially stretch nerves. And if you stretch a nerve longer than ten percent of its length, you rip off the little blood vessels that get to it, and nerves get really pissed off when you do that. Okay, so that's one surefire way how you create chronic pain. Um, sure. So therefore, too much flexibility in in an uh, if you do it too quick can extremely damage you just from that angle but the other thing i want to say is you know every every man is different we have got strong armor no, that makes us man but we all have got an achilles heel and sometimes it's the back sometimes it's the shoulders sometimes it's that we are not 100 percent perfect so there are many many things that we need to really uh accept you can't just go out look at a picture Ooh, i want to do that pretzel uh, and try to go for it. So, I mean, uh, I've dropped a few few hints here. Uh, how do you think about those things? Well, you you just put in there like about twenty different thoughts. <laughs> I know, I know. That's my brain. I'm so sorry, but I, I want to no, say I, we are all unique for crying out loud. Yeah, mm. We are, we are all unique. And and you know, the funny thing about yoga classes sometimes they say like we're celebrating uniqueness, but then they want you to be very like, you know, you have to look like this. Mm. And, um, and that's, it's a complete contradiction. There's a few contradictions, but that is definitely at the top of the list. One of the things I wanted to, well, there's a few things I wanted to say, but um, I think we could have fun with this, especially the fact that you have a medical background. Um, and, there, and there's a bit of science in this, but just to start off with my teacher, Greg Roscoff from Muscle Activation Technique, always has this quote and it's drilled into my mind that when you have flexibility without stability that's right. always going to lead to instability and instability will always lead to injury and a lot of people go well i want to be like one of those gymnasts you know, those Olympic gymnasts. Well, number one, have you ever seen a, a gymnast, a real diehard gymnast uh, competing? I'm not talking about someone that does it once a week for fun. Have you ever seen a, a, a diehard gymnast last longer than 25, 26? I think mm -hmm. Simone Biles, with, there's been so much news about her. I think she's 26 years old and she's done. She was mm -hmm. like, tapping out she's like i can't do this anymore no, now that exactly. was related to more other things than her body but still her body was starting to give out on Absolutely. her if you look at the lineup of people you know that these gymnasts these even ballerinas ballerinas Absolutely. dancers all of them are covered in ace bandages mm. you know around their shoulders and around their mm. knees and and you look at even people that work out um, professionally, these gym guys, mm -hmm. and what what is the one thing you always see? They have these things on their wrists, they have things around their back. Now, that's not a bad thing. I'm not judging it, but I think it's very important to point out that, that those things, those weight belts, those mm -hmm. wrist things, those ace bandages are creating stability because the muscles can't. Mm -hmm. And they've, 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 disconnected from the muscles at a neurological level at a neuromuscular level and those muscles are not able to contract and contract on demand those muscles are not able to provide stability so we have to go outside to ace bandages to you know those mm. those weight belts lifting belts to create that stability uh for us what what is interesting and i think that your line about use it or lose it is so brilliant because it is true, but not because we're stretching those muscles, but because we're actually using the muscles in our arms. Mm. And the reason why I'm so adamant against stretching, there's a few reasons, but one of them is it goes against your body's natural biomechanical mechanism. So if you think about like your arm and you want to, your arm is stretched out and you want to bring your bicep or sorry, your, your wrist to your shoulder, you're going to contract the bicep. There's a reciprocal action that the, when you, the bicep contracts, the tricep relaxes. Mm -hmm. And so we look at like, you know, I call these guys that can't bend past their knees, sometimes stiff biffs. <laughs> and, uh -huh. and it's my loving expression. But, you know, you take stiff biff and he can't touch his, you know, can't go 
past yeah. his knees. It's not because the hamstrings are tight. It's because the hamstrings won't relax. Uh -huh. And the reason why they won't relax is because the quads aren't contracting properly. You know, is if we can get the quads contracting properly, Biff will not only have range of motion, but he'll have stability in that range of motion. Uh -huh. um, so there's this, we've somehow forgotten, even in the medical community, it blows me away, how much even in the medical community and with physiotherapists, and, you know, I could go down the list, that we've forgotten this simple, you know, biomechanical fact that there's a reciprocal action when one muscle contracts, the other muscle um, relaxes. Well, if that muscle isn't relaxing, we come back to the hamstrings, uh -huh. the hamstrings are tight. Well, why are they tight? Because the brain isn't, the, 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 the thigh muscles are not contracting properly. And so the brain just sends out a, a nationwide message, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, contract, oh. contract, contract, right. because we need to have stability. So when we stretch, we're actually violating the body's own natural protective mechanism. Mm. When the body is, is feeling unstable, when it's feeling not safe, it will just tighten up. Mm. And so what we want to do is start to, as Greg says, sometimes melt the ice. And we do that, we melt the ice by getting the body's muscular system to start working mm. properly. And it might sound strange, <laughs> but this is so true of what you had just said there. It is, um, for those of you lucky enough who have been exposed to someone uh, like Aaron or to to an osteopath who knows what they are doing, um, you, might, you might find that they suddenly, you know, touch you there and suddenly a motion that was weak as suddenly Oh yeah, you can hold that. And you think, what the hell? Because a muscle was not activated. A muscle literally had gone asleep. There was a disconnect between and that muscle. And it is bizarre. So when once you have got that uh that experience, once you see it in yourself, it is mind-blowing. Um, and that is really what you're about: switching on the muscles and teaching the muscles how to contract proper. And therefore, yeah. causing causing the natural range of motion to be optimized, mm -hmm. and then um, maybe just optimizing for the full range of motion because some people are already um, hindered. And then I guess there's an that's quite appropriate if someone is already very restricted that we might open up that range of motion again. So is it fair to say that flexibility might not be the same as what someone else is, is considered about flexibility? Well, how would you define flexibility? Oh, what is what is healthy, what is not healthy? How would you define it? Well, it's funny you ask that question because in my very in my podcast series, um, which is more like a documentary storytelling series the very first question I ask is how much flexibility do you need to have to be happy? Mm. Mm. And, and I find that it's not flexibility that we need to worry about. It's getting muscles to work properly. Mm. Okay. When you have muscles that are working properly, you can bend forward. You can tie up your shoelaces. Mm. You don't have to grab the counter. You know, I remember mm. my grandmother when I was a kid, who would drop something on the floor by accident. And then she would grab the counter with one hand and then grab the, her, you know, leg with the other or something. And then she would sort of bend over and go, mm. oh. And I was like, oh. And I probably had that image drilled into me, which is why I started stretching because I thought I never want to be like that. Mm. Mm. And so when you ask what's healthy range of motion, I know that some people have sometimes talked about it, but I don't, I don't look at that. I don't try to come up with stretching anymore per se, or, or how much flexibility you should have. Mm. Um, I just think that what's more important is getting the body to function better. And Absolutely. that usually inflexibility is always, always the result of, of, past injuries or or mm. tight muscles that are a result of the body feeling unstable very interesting okay no very good very good um it is what about the the 
if we compare, let's say, the typical American or typical sort of Western world with a typical um, Asian, and when I say typical, I mean the range of motions uh, based mm -hmm. upon the function. So if you were to to travel through through Asia, Southeast Asia, let's say, you will see many people, they're just relaxing in a squatting position. So not all squat in, in, in a really deep low. Their feet are completely firm on the bottom and they are down there. And it's actually quite a nice comfy, comfy position there. They're basically sitting on their on their feet, so to speak. Um that is normal. And for them, try that in the Western world. I mean, you know, many people can't do that. So what's normal? Or is it something that we Westerner should try? You know, how do you, how do you well, compare that? There's, I, that's, I mean, that I've traveled a lot through Asia too. So I've, you know, and I think that when we compare, definitely there's a difference. I want to kind of zoom out for a moment to 40,000 mm -hmm. feet and just say that in all my travels, I see people dealing with the same issues physiologically everywhere mm -hmm. in the world, you know, and I think, you know, depending on culture, some cultures place more of an importance on certain problems, of course, but I, I kind of just see, like, I've traveled to India so many times mm -hmm. and I can't tell you, like, I'll tell somebody like, Oh, I do. I teach yoga and they go, Oh, I need to stretch. <laughs> and then they go, <laughs> Will show me like how inflexible they are and i'm like there's part of my brain that goes what you're an indian you know you're uh -huh. you're supposed to you're the embodiment of this this tradition but it was sort of a realization like we all deal with the same problems but to, uh, but there's also i want to answer your question more directly and just say like in asian cultures um, especially a lot of Southeast Asian cultures um, like India and, you know, um, Thailand and that sort of thing. A lot of these cultures, they grow up on the floor. They don't have a lot of furniture. They don't have chairs. Mm. Chairs changed everything in our culture. If you look at a lot of like a lot of cultures, people just sit on the ground. Mm. I walked into an Indian home, um, Indian friend's home one time. And there was not a chair in the place. Everybody sat on the floor. They took their tea on the floor. And then in the other room, there was no beds. Everybody just went. That was the room to sleep. Everybody slept on the floor. So in a lot of cultures, they're just Southeast Asian cultures, especially, you see this different range of motion happen just because they, they grew up on the floor and they just got used to uh, sitting like that. Yeah. I also think, too, that there's a difference in bodies. Like you look at the typical um, uh, Indian body at least one that, you know, demonstrates yoga poses and a lot of the yoga photos they are, you know, usually skinny, lanky, mm -hmm. um, short statured, mm -hmm. very light. <laughs> mm -hmm. So all of that is going to have mm -hmm. an effect in, in mm -hmm. sort of, you know, play a role, but to, you know, a lot of those people deal with the same kind of stress in their life that same, you know, deal with their own set of traumas mm -hmm. And and then overuse their bodies in different ways, and that all of that starts to have an effect Absolutely. on our neuromuscular connection. Okay, and you're quite right. I mean, we are often choking about a builder's back or a builder's yeah. shoulder. Um, men who do very hard physical work and often lift tremendous weights in weird angles on parts of their body. No surprise yeah. that their body. Uh, shows sooner or later the scars of those multiple repeated injuries that are occurring. And maybe no surprise is that then the muscles around it try to protect that area and become rather stiff and tight. And if you now say, oh, come on, let's stretch. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So, so um, exactly, exactly right. So, so can you give us an example? I mean, maybe maybe try me as a guinea pig um, to show um, that uh, I uh, that everyone uh, can actually readjust their uh, their muscles and teach their muscles how to properly behave again. Is there well, a way? 
I mean, there are, yeah, no, absolutely. There are ways. Um, so um, it's hard to do this because we're in an interview, you know, and we don't have our yoga mats out. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one of the things that you can do is um, you can, you know, just take your right arm and bring it up to the sky, but keep the arm straight. So bring the arm forward yep. and just move it slowly up and just start to notice where your end range of motion is. Like you'll kind of feel like it's a little gummy. Mm. It's a little sticky. You're not pushing it. And the moment you start to thrust your chest forward, you're going beyond a mm. range of motion okay, and yeah. just do that on the other side. So mm. you can take the, the, the other arm forward and just mm. kind of do the same thing and just kind of a sense of mm. sometimes your range of motion will stop because there's pain or something like that. Right. Mm. Now, of course you can go further, but then you start compensating by mm. uh, pushing the chest mm. forward. So that's, so that's just the test. Mm. I just wanted you to test it and just feel Mal, it. Mal difference. Um, yep. And you might, yeah, you might notice a difference between the two sides of the body. Mm -hmm. So right away, that's also a problem because now there's an asymmetrical imbalance. Mm -hmm. So we'll just do a couple of muscle activations. So, so in yoga, what would happen is the teacher would come over and go, you need to get your arm farther back. And the uh -huh. teacher would, you know, take the hand and grab the arm and bring it back. <laughs> and, and that is causing even more yeah. problems than we can count at this moment. That's uh -huh. a whole other conversation. But let's just quickly. So let's activate the upper traps. The upper traps play part. So just kind of shrug your shoulders slowly up towards your ears. And then relax down. And then do it again. Slowly and bring your shoulders up. Good. Now don't lower your head. Just keep the, sh the head where it is and then relax and then do it again. So now this is actually a, a, a simple way, a very simple way and relax to start activating or firing the upper traps, the upper trapezius mm -hmm. muscle. Mm -hmm. And then relax down and then do it again. Good. And then relax down. Now bring the arms up to the sides, turn the palms up to the sky. Okay. Now don't move your chest, just bring your arms back as far as you can. And you can feel a squeezing in between your shoulder blades mm -hmm. and then relax down. Mm -hmm. And then bring the arms out again, turn the palms up. Don't move your chest. So try not to move the chest and just bring the arms back. Mm -hmm. There you go. By the way, if you sit as we do sometimes and relax, and then do it again turn the palms up towards the sky and then bring the arms back so if you sit at a desk all the time it really compromises the integrity of your neck relax the arms down this is a great little sequence for that as well because anytime you start to improve shoulder stability you and mm. squeeze the arms back you're going to improve the integrity of the neck mm. and then relax down good now we're going to do another one i'm going to turn to the side this is one of my favorite ones so you want to keep the back um really uh aligned here but mm -hmm. just bring the arms forward and so you're going to have the hands like this but the arm is going to be straight mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. pretend that there's a wall in front of your mm -hmm. hands yeah. And now you're going to push forward. Don't round your back. Okay. Just bring shoulders forward. So just do that. Yep. And then relax down. And then do it again. So it's like you're just, you're, you're standing about an, an inch away from an imaginary wall and then relax down mm -hmm. and then bring the arms up and then push your hands into that imaginary wall. You're protracting the shoulders here. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're doing. You're protracting the shoulders, come down and then bring the hands up and push. And then back down. And then we'll do it one more time and push. And you probably will feel this right here. There's a muscle there called the serratus anterior. It starts to kick it in. So now we only did three. Sometimes I use, do usually do four or five, but just slowly bring one arm up and just see if there's a difference in the ease or the range of motion. Like for me, I'm noticing that that gumminess I felt right about here is no longer there. 
and I have freedom to move right up to about there. And then the same on the other side. Mm. So you get, you can start to sense like, mm. oh, my, my okay. shoulder, my arm is working better. My shoulders are more open and they're more stable. They're clearly, it has improved range of motion by about 10 degrees, I would say. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Intriguing. for me too, like I said, that gumminess, that yeah. kind of stickiness. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's no longer there. There's no longer that resistance because the muscle is contracting. We uh, got those muscles to shorten properly that are bringing the arm up before mm -hmm. the, the muscles weren't yeah. firing properly. Interesting. And that these are exactly the, the kind of things that we see. We didn't go into, ah, ah. And whilst, whilst a good stretch in the morning is beautiful. Don't be silly. So we are not going, going, no, no, never stretch again. We are talking about doing the right things. You have now switched on muscles and immediately my range of motion has changed. Now, hang on. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if we were to able to learn that in other joints, would that not be a beautiful thing to do? Would that not be a much more logical and sensible and probably healthy way to do it? Amazing. Okay. So I love that. I love the difference of your technique. Uh, and it makes far more sense from a biomechanical point of view. And we, we've yeah. just demonstrated it here that actually works. That's interesting. Um, wow. So I want to just say too, like from, from what we're talking about when we, when I use the word stretching anyways, um, what I'm talking about is passively pushing the body beyond its range of motion. So if right. you if you are like, you know, I use that example with the arm here. Well, sometimes you might take your hand and push your arm back, yeah. right? So that's passively starting to move the arm into a range yeah. of motion that it's not ready for. Sure. So sure. that's that's the difference in the stretching or if you like are sitting on the floor and you want to grab your feet but you can't reach them, you use sometimes a yoga strap or some sort of rope yeah. wrapped around your feet and you pull yourself forward. That yeah. becomes passive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's fine. Um when do you know that enough is enough? Where is the healthy, the healthy point? How do you of figure what? that out? But what's the point that we're talking to about? Like what, what is the, um, what, what's that point that you're reaching for? Mm. Indeed. <laughs> indeed. I, th I think it is quite good. I mean, it is, how do you go about defining normal versus abnormal? Because automatically you need so much more insight. I think an, a lay person or even a medical person like me who has not got the, uh, the understanding necessarily about activation of muscles uh, versus stretching of uh, half, half contracted and half asleep and a little bit crazy muscles. Um, it is, uh, I can see where, where damage does occur. So how do we marry all that up? Should I mean, in the first instance, guys, if you're if you think about starting any exercise program, I always say, look, if you have not done anything for a long time, go to your GP, go to your family physician, first of all, and get a bit of a checkup. And because to actually see what the hell is going on in your body, your blood pressure might be sky high. Uh, you have got you've developed diabetes. Um, you have got all kind of shit happening that actually very much impairs your body, impairs your function of the body, uh, the function of the muscles, the function of the joints, the functions of the blood vessels, and those of the nerves. I'm just taking the example of diabetes now. So therefore, a good medical tune-up is a bloody good thing before you actually head in anything new. And because we are talking a bit about sobriety and about those kind of things, I certainly remember when I went into rehab, one of the first things we did was a yoga class. And mm. uh, and it was interesting. And I felt like crap the next day. And uh, no surprise, because I had been, whilst I was 
as a young man, I was doing shit loads of sports and, and martial arts. Well, guess what? When you're drinking, well, you're more balancing your glass than actually balancing your body, are you? So <laughs> therefore, for 20 years, I was probably stiff like a prick. And then uh, I wanted to go out there and, yeah, let's stretch. Yeah. No surprise. That went pear-shaped. So therefore, uh, when you start off doing something new, medical tune-up, um, you could do far worse than actually seeking maybe some better guidance. Don't just go out there, buy a, buy a YouTube program on something and then start stretching yourself. Maybe find out are there people around you who can maybe coach you. So how do you find a good coach? How do you find someone who does not try to push you into the wrong movements? How do you that, distinguish? I mean, you know, there's, there's, um, it's hard. It's hard to find it. Um, you know, in my part right now, I'm doing my best to start the conversation. And I really appreciate being here because I think that we need to talk more about this it's stretching. Um, this idea of stretching is not just an epidemic in the yoga world. It's mm all over the medical world as well. Mm. And we've put common sense aside and replaced it with, with, you know, feeding mm. the beast, mm. so to speak. So it's hard. And I, I think that the best thing that listeners can do is to try to educate themselves as much as possible. Mm. Um, you know, I've created a ton of resources and, um, and that sort of thing that people can take advantage of. And then they can start to go out and, oh yeah, like, go to the muscle activation technique website and see if there's a mm. person in your area that can work on you. Mm. Look for people in your own hometown, like wherever you are in the world that are teaching muscle activation, mm. start to ask people like, how do you work? You know, mm. are you interested in stretching? Or are you interested in improving muscle function? It's hard to find good people because no. there's a lot of misinformation out there that, is being taught in schools, mm. like legitimate schools. And, um, and so you just kind of have to, you know, take this conversation and start to build on it and mm. inform yourself. Mm. Um, that's the best advice that I can give. It's not easy that's to find people, but if you ask the right questions, good. then then the right people will show up for you all the time. <laughs> that sounds like a damn good idea. That's such a very good philosophy that I certainly subscribe to. Um, Yogi Aaron, uh, if people really gel with what you have said and want to know more about you and maybe link up with you, how can they do that? Well, the best way is go on my website, which is yogiaaron.com. Um, and um, on there, and I hope maybe you'll include it in the show notes, is a, a free um, introduction to Living Pain-Free. It's a series that I created. Um, to start just taking people through some basic exercises, mm. similar to what I just did with you, but I mm. start to break down the different parts of the body mm. and um, um, and then just start to show people like how to start creating some simple uh, stability in their in their body mm. and in their neuromuscular system. And the benefit, of course, is not only do you feel better, but you also get more range of motion. Nice. So, um... <laughs> nice. okay. so guys, look down there into the description of the YouTube video and of the podcast, because you've got all of the links down there. Uh, don't be shy. Just click on it and, and see where that takes you. Because bottom line is, what have you got to lose? I, I am confident that if you were now in front of Aaron and me, we would quite quickly see that there are certain parts of your body which are not really so switched on. And that maybe by very simple things, by very simple moves, we could already improve your quality of life, probably just like that. It certainly happens to me all the time when I expose myself to someone like Aaron or to 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 similar uh, techniques. It it just every single time blows my mind. You think, yeah. hey, I'm feeling good, and then you do something like that, and you're not walking out, you're floating out. You're sort of <laughs> you know, because your body is in tune, and you think, oh, fuck, crying out loud, and so that's a beautiful thing to actually be in tune with yourself. Um, 
why don't you show yourself the respect and the love that you actually look after yourself? And how about tuning up your body in the right way? So maybe we should not talk about uh, yoga in a broad sense and stretching. Maybe we should talk about tuning up your body to your optimum optimum capacity to your optimum ideal and you know some of you might be a lada or an audi and others might be a ferrari or a porsche that's cool um all of you all of your engines need tuning okay and I, I'll, I'll tell you that and we see that even more so with with uh sports people who are extremely putting their body under stress they even even them, or especially them, you could say they need tuning up because they do all the wrong things. Take power lifters or take take um, CrossFit fanatics. Um, we see constantly coming them coming through to to the medical world um, because they have just stuffed up uh, by doing something like that. How about a more regular tune up so that the stuff up doesn't happen so much? Hey, I just realized I I talked myself out of business here. <laughs> no, keep injuring yourself, guys. Otherwise, I don't get money as an anesthetist. No, keep going. Keep going. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I think I want to make this world a better place. And I think by by talking to you, Aaron, you have already shown me that we all can do so much more to get our body in tune with the way it is supposed to work, rather than trying to make it do things that it maybe wasn't even designed to. So. Here you go. Aaron, thank you so much for coming onto my show. You certainly uh, opened my mind quite a bit, and I love your take Yay. on things. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's been fun talking with you. <laughs> An absolute pleasure. Hey, guys. So go down there to the YouTube. Click on his, uh, on his links. Uh, it's definitely worthwhile. And otherwise, live with passion and go out there and make this, make this a beautiful life. You have got all the, the choices ahead of you. It doesn't matter where you are on your journey. Just go out there and live with passion. Bye.